today we will speak about uh, queer curl. I suppose someone heard about it. It's uh, something uh, new in uh, our country, let's say, because it's not very popular. But uh, we will try to give some impact and to see actually how the future will uh, going to be with uh, using the graph query APIs uh, instead of the REST API, which are actually we are all using between communication between client and servers. Uh, so you can find me only on LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't like very much the social networks, but this is the one that you must have in our business. So uh, the agenda is uh, a little bit simple, but uh, we will talk uh, about the different uh, parts of the systems. So on the beginning, we will see what, what is actually the graph curve and uh, some uh, points uh, what the, the benefit uh, in the graph group between the REST API. Uh, I will show uh, three architectures uh, which are generally used uh, in the systems between the server and clients. And we will describe the graph group fundamentals uh, that uh, would be used in the Apollo server and as a client we use the Android client but uh, it can be used uh, any type of client but we will keep on the Apollo because it's one of the most popular. Uh, the GraphQL language, so it is a query language uh, which can des describe the, the data you, uh, you come on the server side and on, on the client side uh, you send a request that uh, will ask actually for uh, some data. So we will make a query uh, that will describe uh, which type of data actually we want to have uh, in the response. And because uh, we ask for that uh, data, we will know uh, the response, uh, uh, how the structure of the response would be. As mentioned on the beginning, uh, this is the API technology for uh, communicating between the clients and the servers. And the, uh, the main benefit of the graph query is that it's more uh, efficient than the REST API. Because uh, in the REST API, you have uh, resources which you want to uh, take, but they could be separated in the different uh, tables in the uh, database on the server. So for every resource, you made uh, another request uh, to take uh, that type of uh, data. But in the uh, graph, uh, you ask for every type of data you want in only one request. So that is a really, really good benefit because uh, you uh, you are very efficient in the communication part. But even for the uh, mobile phones, uh, let's say it would uh, it would take uh, less uh, battery consumption than than the rest of API usage. So it's very powerful to have uh, in, in the system. Um, one of the most uh, important thing is in, in the graph query that it is designed by Facebook. So everyone wants to use something that is populated by the huge companies and want to use uh, in their uh, systems. So actually uh, it is uh, publicly released in uh, 2015, but uh, the, the main, mainly they, they develop uh, it in uh, 2012, but uh, for only for their purposes, for their system, actually for the uh, new speed in the Android, so the iOS application on the mobile phones. So because they they want to uh, not waste in the in the communication between, between the client and the service. So we know that uh, within several years the phones were were very low power and. Uh, 
don't have that much uh, resources to to take, or even maybe the, the internet connection was uh, broken. Okay. So, uh, they develop uh, this system, so uh, many of the companies uh, yeah. from the beginning when they uh, just announced that they got the system but don't want, want to uh, release publicly, many of the companies have them, please tell us uh, this uh, feature we want to use in our system. So, uh, actually, the other companies uh, forced uh, Facebook to edit this uh, system and we, we have that benefit today to use it. The other uh, uh, improvement in, in the API systems are that we have only one endpoint. So we don't have to generate many, many endpoints uh, on the server side, we just, just need only one endpoint, so every data that we want to, to cut, we send a request with the data we want, and the server will respond uh, with that part of the data we have field actually asked. This uh, efficient is the mobile usage mostly uh, because we have uh, better communication, even mo more stable uh, communication using this uh, graphic. And uh, the other benefit is that you can develop on every platform you want, from the server side or on the client side. So uh, you, you can use uh, any language you want on the server side and for the client, it could be a website or the native mobile application, it doesn't matter. The other improvement uh, in the system is that the, uh, when, when you describe the communication between the, system, between the client and system, uh, you just define some a schema that uh, would be shared between the teams and they could uh, work separately without uh, any uh, need to, to wait for some feature to be implemented on one of the parts and to test. So you just define the, the, the schema uh, and both teams uh, could work uh, independently. The, the most common problem on the the rest was uh, overfetching and uh, underfetching, which, uh, as as we can see, that uh, it can take uh, too much uh, time for asking many information that we don't want to get because the the REST APIs will will send us uh, all the information that uh, comes from the database uh, table, but actually maybe in our application we want to shown only few of the things uh, that are uh, important in that request. So without having to, uh, to, you, to receive that unimportant information in that moment for us, so we, will, we just uh, ask for the appropriate data we want to have. Um, the architectures uh, started with uh, the simplest one. So, uh, most of the system got uh, only one uh, server side that got some logic, some database that's stored there, and we have a client that could be a website or the mobile client. Uh, here, we, we see that the communication uh, is uh, between them, uh, it could be in uh, any type of network layer. So that's another thing that Graph uh, is managed to, to have because uh, you can use HTTP as a TCP or a SOL. It's not, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just define the, the schema and the, the, the data that you actually uh, got on the server side and what you ask for. Uh, another uh, architecture is uh, the 
the architecture that integrates several uh, type of uh, servers uh, on on the server side, uh, but they could be some old uh, systems uh, that actually can work with the REST APIs. But because uh, it's important to to have the uh, the connection between the clients and the servers, uh, the connection between the GraphQL server, which actually in this moment is mostly as a gateway uh, between the some legacy or some microservices. Uh, here the importance is that uh, this communication could be uh, uh, could be made uh, many times uh, established, but it could be on the same server or uh, could be on a different service that will make some uh, caching on the GraphQL uh, server that would not uh, waste uh, that network traffic for asking many times uh, for the uh, data between the GraphQL server and the other services that could, could be used uh, in, the, in this file. And um, some of the services even could be third party, for example, to authenticate to some client uh, server, then you would have access to the, the rest of the data you would ask uh, for, for that uh, client. But uh, all that part would be uh, made between the uh, graph group and, and, the, and the client on the other side, but uh, we will not uh, have m many different uh, communications between the third party and uh, the GraphQL server. And as, as we can see, uh, uh, also we could uh, make uh, some hybrid uh, architecture where the, the GraphQL would also have more logic and uh, some database that store information and also to communicate with the third parties uh, APIs uh, which are in the system. So, uh, on, on the fundamentals uh, of the systems, uh, one, one of them is the graphical schema. So, uh, we have a, a defined uh, syntax for uh, generating uh, the schema which is a uh, schema definition language. And uh, the benefit is that it is strong type, so we know uh, what type of data we are asking and uh, what type of data we, we, will, we will receive. Uh, the schema is a contract because uh, there is some uh, feature uh, that is uh, uh, that is uh, get during the uh, communication with the uh, server clients, you can take the, the contract that server uh, uh, tells you uh, which type of uh, data that they could provide for you. So uh, you know actually what you could ask. Uh, you don't need to have the documentation uh, of the server side uh, on the beginning because you can just send a query that actually the server will respond to you with all the information that you read, you want uh, to, to have. So you can have a list of the data types and the APIs that are available for using. Uh, on, a, on the rest uh, APIs, we usually uh, are using uh, Swagger to des uh, design the, the endpoints, but uh, to make it easy for the users who want to migrate uh, the system, or even Apple got a uh, runtime uh, conversion, so they could uh, use the, the old REST uh, API system and directly convert you to, to the GraphQL server that uh, would uh, allow you to, to use the client that uh, have GraphQL. Uh, the other benefit uh, in the GraphQL is that uh, you, you, don't, uh, you don't have versions. So you don't version in the endpoints. And uh, uh, you always could uh, asking for the data that uh, you know that they are on the server. 
so there will not be any changes uh, in the fields. So it's more very important how you name the the data that is that you are asking for, because uh, in the future maybe something could be deprecated. But usually the on the server side uh, it's left the the, the uh, backward compatibility for for the system. So. Uh, your grant even could be some old or the new one, uh, they, could, uh, they would actually communicate with the same endpoint that uh, is defined the graph uh, on the uh, On the schema that uh, is uh, getting from the server, you could see that uh, some of the fields could be mar marked as deprecated, so the the developers of the client would know that in some future uh, this field uh, can be uh, removed. Uh, we will see here some basic uh, definition of the uh, of the schema. So uh, those are the types that we are using uh, in the GraphQL definition. Uh, the the data types are very basic. That we have only integer, string, float. Uh, so uh, it can be easily uh, adapted to get generate a new uh, new data types. Uh, and uh, we have uh, exclamation mark to uh, mention that uh, this uh, field would always. Uh, return a field, so that it would be non no uh, uh, field in the, in the request when we get the data. And the uh, square brackets, uh, is a map. it would uh, mention that uh, this is already as a, it's usually in every uh, programming languages. Uh, how we are defining uh, which data we want to uh, cut? So uh, we are writing the queries where we, uh, we describe actually which uh, uh, which field we will want to have. So, for example, it, on all users, uh, uh, define the name, but it's possible we don't want to get the ages of the skills for, for some users because on the client side we will have only some list of the names. So we are sending only the query uh, give me all the names from all users. Uh, this uh, gets uh, this is this query is actually the uh, the, the get uh, alternative to the REST APIs and uh, changing of some of the fields. Uh, we are using mutations, so they can be used for creating, updating, or deleting the the data on the server side. And it's uh, it's very uh, similar to how we create the queries. Just we send the uh, the parameters which will to be updated, created, and on the response uh, we will the uh, for for example this uh, we will get only the ID of the new created uh, user. Uh, another feature that we don't have on the REST table. So uh, it is a subscription. We are able to subscribe for changes on the server side for some data. Every time when some of the data will be changed, uh, we will get the uh, update uh, for, for this uh, that we got uh, changes and we can update our clients with the uh, UV uh, data. Uh, we will have a more deeper uh, look on, on how, how actually GraphQL is working. So we we want to have uh, we want to make some connection between uh, two different uh, tables in the database. So we, we got the user and we got the uh, fonts uh, that actually that user uh, the font that uh, belong to that user. So we store here only the ID for, for the particular user, 
because we want to query in the database uh, for, for the information that we want to uh, get for that uh, form. Uh, here it's important that also we have an uh, input type instead of the general uh, type for the, uh, for the present the, da the data. We have input uh, which we are using only in the mutation. So when we want to uh, send from the client side some uh, information to the server, uh, we, we put uh, those uh, input uh, data. So we would, the, in the resolution, we would use uh, that field to make some calculation or some query. Uh, the resolver function is actually uh, it is uh, written in, in the language that uh, that is written the server side. So, but here the example is uh, in Node.js, and uh, it is uh, very simple for, for example, getting the the whole list of the users, or uh, to get some of the user by by the uh, by uh, by ID, so we, we got arguments uh, dot ID that that we have uh, previously uh, mentioned in the uh, in the query in the previous one, and we we would return uh, all the data for for the particular user. The same is for the fonts. Uh, the the only difference uh, here is creating the uh, how we create uh, the the database, so we got the arguments, and uh, this is the input uh, field that we have uh, on the mutation as an argument, and we get all the, those separate uh, fields uh, to send to the database for uh, making actually the, the new uh, form to create the, to create a new user. Uh, the most important uh, is is here how we uh, made the, the the phone, how we get the phones actually. Uh, because uh, here with the user data, which is data that could be uh, returned from the from the query for uh, user by ID. So here we got the phone as a, a complete uh, information uh, data for that particular uh, form. Uh, so uh, we use uh, only the form ID and get from the database to fill this uh, form data type to have uh, the information actually we want to see. Uh, we will use uh, this uh, type of server uh, that is created. Uh, to see how actually is uh, working this query on the client side, but just to mention uh, several things about how uh, how is the setup for the Apollo server. It's very mm, just getting dependencies uh, on the server and uh, creating the service. It's only uh, that requires uh, the type def definitions and the result function. That uh, we have written uh, in uh, the Node.js file. Uh, in the end, this uh, of the service made just to uh, send the URL which uh, would be started uh, the server. Here, uh, it's the uh, uh, it, it's the query that we will need to uh, load. So. Here we are mentioning uh, only the, the fields that we want to receive on the client side. So uh, this is uh, a playground, uh, playground uh, platform that uh, is um, embedded on, on the Apple server, uh, where we can uh, test the, the queries. So, uh, for example, on, on, Swagger, on Swagger, we have uh, op options to test the, the endpoints, but they are only on their server side. But here we are 
directly communicate with the, uh, the real server. Uh, here the, the URL could be any uh, server that is right, and we test it directly with it and creating the data would be there. So uh, many times uh, the developers on the backend side don't, don't have a client for testing their implementation and bother the developers on the client side just test to this how it's functioning, do I got some errors with the data or not. So they he here have a very good uh, environment to test uh, their implementation. Uh, here uh, on the right side is the response uh, from the server. So we, we ask uh, for all data, so we ask for the two uh, databases. So uh, we have all users and all phones. Uh, only in one request without uh, sending two requests as uh, this could be made on the REST API. Uh, on the end, uh, we got uh, all available functions that we can use uh, to query or update some data on the server side. So th this uh, was the uh, important part for the developing, uh, for the developers on the client side that uh, they don't need for documentation uh, for from the server side guides. Uh, as we mentioned that uh, on the server we can uh, get uh, all the information uh, for particular users, so uh, we fill uh, the data from the database uh, about the phones. We get the appropriate uh, uh, data and show in the same request, so we can use uh, how how much uh, uh, data we want to have. So we can mention many fields in the same uh, request and we would receive uh, on the client side. So the, the structure could be very huge. Uh, how we test actually on the uh, on this uh, playground platform? Uh, we have uh, uh, query variables. So we are making some JSON that uh, put the ID or for creating the users we filled uh, all the data here and when we sent, sent it would be uh, written in the database. Uh, about the clients, uh, there are two uh, major uh, clients that are using uh, nowadays. So one about which we, we will talk about is Apple client and the other is Relay which is actually from the Facebook. Uh, there are many, many other uh, clients that you can find. Even you can uh, build your own because the syntax for the queries it's very basic. You, you can uh, it's URL coded and you can uh, actually write uh, you everything you want. So you can put uh, manually the the field you want to get from the server side. About the setup of uh, the Android client, because uh, we need to know uh, what are the, uh, the possibilities for getting from the servers, uh, we, we will use the Apple Codekin to, uh, to get the schema. So uh, here is described the, uh, what actually a uh, server side is uh, uh, possible to, to do. And here we are uh, writing the queries uh, what data we want to get on the server. So uh, the both uh, files uh, sh uh, should be added in, in the Android project. Uh, you can uh, make your own pet query with effort uh, the package name for, for the generated models that would be used uh, in the application you would uh, it is easier for you to 
to make some uh, approximate naming of the pet, and you will get only the models actually uh, you would use on the server side. Uh, there are three dependencies that uh, is mostly used uh, on the on the Android uh, part of that program. So the the runtime and Android support, and then uh, uh, we got here the uh, the support for Rx uh, one and two at uh, the both drivers, so we can use uh, this feature also as we are using for. Uh, uh, for example, we can use the eggs here also. And uh, uh, building the grants is, is very similar as uh, for retrofit. Uh, we got the HTTP grant, we had got the URL on which uh, you should, we should point to. And here is the interesting part uh, from the Android developers, how actually uh, we are writing the, the queries from the uh, Android application. So uh, we have a function that uh, would uh, make the, uh, the request to the, to the server side. So we are building, this is uh, some uh, j just a query that without using any parameters, but uh, in the other example, uh, we got the uh, uh, we got the query. So this type systems is uh, generated uh, automatically uh, during the building of the Android application. So we got the models that actually we, we need to fill and send to the. The server side also is the same for the data we are getting from the server side. So the, you don't need to write uh, models for the representation of the data for showing the, uh, for using in the application. But uh, I, I, rather, I rather want to make my own uh, uh, models because maybe in the future uh, something will be changed. So for uh, clean code, uh, it is better to have your own uh, models, but uh, the, then the negative side here is that you always need to uh, map uh, that data from uh, actually received the data. Here is the where we receive the list of the whole of the users, but uh, I want to map, map uh, in in my uh, type of the data. So uh, here, this is the subscriptions uh, the, the server, so we only subscribe to uh, those requests and we will get the, the response when we have the results from the server side. Uh, about the creating the, the new user, uh, in this uh, situation we will use the mutation. So, uh, because there there were uh, there, there was a, a new input uh, field that we defined on the server side, uh, we got that uh, data type here generated on the Android part, and we just only filled and built that uh, model. So uh, we will use uh, it to send for the uh, for the mutation uh, call that would be executed on the Apple server. Here is the, the same, the mapping is uh, the same, that they, could be, they should be uh, made from, from, the, from the data that we got. Uh, here is, uh, we will show only the, uh, the benefit of the GraphQL, because uh, the drawbacks uh, uh, not that much. Some of them are uh, about the security, uh, how, how we are using the graph tool, because uh, we have only one endpoint. The benefit is uh, that we need to only make the security only on one, one API, not uh, making for every endpoint. But uh, here the problem is that uh, we are sending a queries, uh, we request the data. So, uh, 
that uh, tree of uh, how the query, how much would be in deep, uh, it's not uh, defined, uh, it could not be uh, handled on the server side all the time, so maybe it would make some crash. Uh, for that purpose, uh, some of the libraries uh, got the possibility to prevent uh, the deep of the tree for the queries, so we will mention that uh, this server would have only uh, four, uh, four times deep. We can uh, make the scale for uh, four, uh, four types of deep on the on the query. But uh, if we have a more uh, deeper uh, query, that will send the error to the, the client that is not possible to uh, to be uh, return some of the those those uh, data. Uh, because this is the summary, uh, I will say that uh, the benefit is on, but for the teams that they could uh, work independently. Uh, this is uh, low confidence in the security, but we hope we see that we got uh, some problems there, but most of the libraries want to uh, make a, a, a better uh, approach for that. And uh, the, uh, this development is uh, very tested because we have the models, we don't need to uh, make too much uh, developing, just uh, writing the schema. The flexibility of the APIs is uh, very huge because we, we can make that this uh, data to, to be flexible for several fun uh, functions that uh, could be added on the client side. So uh, we can only write an appropriate uh, query that we will ask for the data we, we want to get. How popular actually is GraphQL? Uh, we will see uh, from the from the history about how it's used the uh, Apple client. So uh, they started from January uh, 2013, but uh, till now we don't, uh, we don't have the latest information. Those are the official that we got for October last year that is uh, above uh, one and a half uh, millions uh, of users who actually download the client. So uh, this is only for on, only one uh, client platform that is uh, using it out, out there. So there are many uh, other that are used and uh, we, we see that uh, this using is increasing very rapidly. So I think that uh, in the future, maybe they will change uh, completely the REST APIs because of uh, the old benefits that uh, I have mentioned during the presentation. Thank you very much. So, questions? Uh, my question is, do you think that uh, this kind of accessing the data uh, with GraphQL will replace the REST API, and why not? <laughs> uh, first, because uh, many of the companies already started uh, using this. Uh, I didn't mention on, on one of the slides that uh, GitHub actually their public uh, API is completely on GraphQL. So many other companies is using this, and I think that they would force uh, to to other users uh, uh, get uh, this approach and in, in uh, their solution. But the benefits are huge uh, for for this. So I think that uh, in the future we will totally remove the REST APIs. Yes, my question was asked because you didn't mention when not to use GraphQL. Um, you, there is not not a, I, I could not see any 
any file service, you could not use the, the graphical because it's a completely, uh, it, this is a complete alternative to the REST API. Even got about the subscription is even more featured than the REST API. So uh, I don't see any trophy that uh, you could not use the graphical instead of the REST API. Yes, what about the there are similar libraries in with, which we can use with REST APIs. Uh, for example, OData is something like that, that uh, allow us to use query language in JavaScript. Uh, JSON uh, schema is uh, something that we use uh, to, to, to act with schemas. What about those? Uh, are those meant for small applications or they can replace? Uh, about the using there are many there are many libraries that can replace small functionalities of GraphQL. Okay. Are they okay to use it, or we should all move to GraphQL? Uh, yeah, we, we don't force always to use this because uh, in some projects uh, now you you have a developers that know only the REST APIs, and it, it is easier if you are familiar with some of the. Uh, of the API to, if you have a small functionality, just to build with that functionality. But uh, when this is the faster way to help you develop the server side and the client side, uh, I don't think that uh, it would be a problem for the developer to use the query instead of that smaller library. So it's the same, it depends on the developer, it's not uh, about the functionality. Of the libraries. So you say in near future we all go to GraphQL. Okay. Probably yes. Thank you. Thank you.